Er, why are you playing Mario? It's a kid's game. We need to fix this. Introducing Superstar Mode, the new and improved Mario for a balanced adult lifestyle. On October 28th, 2018, nearly a year after Super Mario Odyssey's release, Skellix published their new mod, Superstar Mode. The idea behind it was simple. Take the base Mario Odyssey game and up the difficulty throughout, meaning harder challenges, unique twists on bosses, and so on. Of course though, with the initial release of the mod, not everything was done. Some kingdoms didn't have the Superstar Mode remix of the overworld, and to this day, there's still kingdoms missing this treatment. Fortunately, there was an update recently for Wooded Kingdom, so really there's only a few kingdoms left to finish. But that didn't stop me. I'm making this video anyways, because truthfully, I think it's something worth seeing. We start in Cap Kingdom. Things are looking pretty normal. I mean, there's some extra enemies, but nothing to write home about yet. But then, there's no bridge. Fortunately, a gamer knows that with rocket flowers, this is no issue. Now, if you aren't familiar with Odyssey speedrunning, clearing this gap might be a bit tricky, but again, nothing too crazy. Entering Top Hat Tower, we are faced with the only thing I will never forgive Skellix for in this entire mod. He killed the frog. They're just gone. No time to mourn, though. We can climb up the tower with some fancy movement and use these invisible blocks if we run into any issues. But doing this room frogless still isn't anything new. Once we're out, we get some more enemies featuring spinies and hammer bros. Nothing too crazy and pretty easy to ignore. The topper fight is pretty straightforward too. As far as I can tell, this is a copy-paste from the Bowser topper fight, which I mean makes sense. It's not a challenge for veteran players, but we are still at the beginning of the mod. No need to make the first kingdom the craziest. Cascade Kingdom is really where the mod starts to show its new colors. The entire kingdom has a palette swap changing it into this interesting, more dead and deserted landscape. Even if changes like this are unnecessary, I still think they're pretty interesting to look at and help make a mod like this feel new. Our first challenge has an interesting twist to it as well. Instead of capturing the chain chop that's normally by the first moon, we have to head across the falls to the dinosaur who is now on the loose. Capturing them, we can bring them over and break the rock. Reaching Madame Brutal also presents us with another new interesting challenge. Originally, I had no clue how the mod maker wanted us to reach her. Normally, I just use a speedrun strat and hop up. But as it turns out, one of the Kingdom's additions is bullet bills. We can actually use one of those bullet bills to fly around to the 2D rock wall that you'd normally break with a chain chop and destroy it. I'm like 80% sure this is how you're supposed to do it, but it still felt kind of weird and roundabout, so I don't know. After we do all that, we're greeted with the Madam Brutal fight, which kind of like Topper seems to be a copy and paste of the original Moon Kingdom Madam Brutal fight. Now, I may be wrong about this because I haven't done that fight a ton of times, but the concept is the exact same. More hats to take off the chain chomp. After the fight, the kingdom doesn't really change all too much, though like in the base game, once you beat Madame Brutal, more interesting moons do become available. Like a lot of the kingdoms we'll see later, the mod maker has riddled Cascade with unique and new challenges specially made for the mod, though sometimes they're a bit broken. Upon entering Sand Kingdom, we aren't really greeted with some crazy color swap like we are in Cascade, though it does present a new and interesting challenge. The floor is lava. Or, well, the sand. Oh, thank god. See, there's a reason we get spawned in on this peculiarly placed platform. If at any point we touch the sand, Mario will take damage. Personally, I have a very big issue with this, and no, I don't think it's poorly designed, but Cappy here tells us the kingdom is cold, yet the sand still burns. What have you done to the war, Skellix? This is very important to me. You can't just trash all over it. <clears throat> Sorry, um, where were we? Oh yeah, the story. With this new challenge, getting to the ruins or the inverted pyramid is kind of tricky. Now you can do this the smart way and get the Jaxi in town, or if you're too broke, eh, just damage boost. Upon reaching the ruins, they're covered in fire and lava, again contradicting the lore that this area is supposed to be cold right now. Please fix your game, Skellix. Okay, jokes aside, I think this change is really cool. A simple swap from quicksand to lava really adds this interesting flair to the environment and helps it stand out in the mod. After climbing the round tower, we're presented with a path to the moon shard section, except this time the platform is tiny. Personally, I don't find this to be much an issue as you can just parkour across the blocks, but it's still a bit disorienting. Along the way, we also get to meet this neat little mummy that for some reason has a moon. Cool. 
Exploring this new area with a Moai makes things pretty easy. There isn't much ground to stand on, and fortunately the Moais don't take damage while walking on the sand, so they help out quite a bit. Collecting the shards here is pretty standard to the main game. The main exception being a small change to the invisible platforms above, meaning there aren't any. Fortunately, making it from pillar to pillar isn't too hard with the proper movement. Once the moon shards are done, we can collect the moon that spawns and head to the inverted pyramid. Getting to the inverted pyramid is pretty simple if we're smart about it. Just warp back to town, grab the jaxi, and drive over. Inside the pyramid, we're shown the epitome of same but harder. Bullets removed for the first gap, then more bullets, and then even more bullets. Once we make it to Harriet, her fight is again mostly the same, with her giving the appearance of being replaced with the Bowser Kingdom version of the fight, keeping to that trend we've seen so far with the bosses. Once in the night version of Sand Kingdom, there isn't too much to note. The story progresses as you'd expect, with the Sand Kingdom underground taking some light changes, such as faster platforms and some added lasers. Things don't really get too interesting until we reach Knuckle Tech. The arena has less ice with some added bullet bills to create a more difficult fight. The idea of adding an enemy to work as backup for the boss kind of reminds me of how the standard game handles the refight with Knuckle Tech, except instead of adding mummies, Skellix decided to add bullets. Realistically though, this doesn't make the fight all too much harder. Through my own experience, I found just walking around in a circle near the edge pretty much guaranteed a safe fight. After clearing the boss fight, the kingdom enters its post-peace form. This adds in some new moons, gets rid of some icicles because the kingdom is heating up, and the hot sand is actually starting to make sense, you know, stuff like that. Now when it comes to clearing the kingdom, it's really all down to trying out some of the new interesting moons and challenges the kingdom has to offer. To ensure this video doesn't get too long, however, we're going to be moving straight to the next kingdom. There's just too much in the mod to showcase it all in a short video, so we're going to keep focused on the more interesting bits. The change in paladin design for Lake Kingdom is probably one of my favorites in the mod. The serene environment has been changed into a snowy wonderland with freezing water. Now normally, with how quickly freezing water damages Mario, you wouldn't be able to make it that far underwater, but what Skellix did is place these captures down that you can use to reset your freeze timer. Sure, the basis of this mechanic is kind of glitchy with Mario immediately being forced out of them, but the approach is still super fascinating to me. Normal Cheap Cheap also seemed to follow this rule, but there was a point where I still got to use one, so I'm not really sure. The actual town on the map is plugged up too, and honestly, I never felt this served much of a valuable purpose, because all it does is force you to use the top entrance. Maybe this is for some sort of specific moon, I'm not really sure. Rango, however, seems to function roughly the same, but he now has the ability to throw two hats at the same time instead of just one. Truthfully, I never found this to make the fight much harder, but it's just Rango, they didn't need to do anything too crazy. Up next is Wooded Kingdom, the newest addition to Superstar Mode. Being a new kingdom, I'd argue it's one of the more interesting altered kingdoms. I feel like Skellix has learned a lot throughout the development of this mod and keeps getting better and better with each new kingdom. At first glance, the kingdom doesn't look too different. The Sphinx question is new, but playing through the mod, I notice that the answer number is always the same, even if the question is different. So if you're like me and have the answers memorized, it's not too hard to find the right option. Once we get into the main area, it becomes a bit more obvious that the kingdom has changed a lot, new colors, faster platforms, and creatively changed areas. The first story moon here is kind of weird. Instead of just having to kill the main giant piranha plant, you actually have to go through and kill every single one to progress, which truthfully is kind of annoying. Collecting the story moon also doesn't seem to open up the P-switch, but don't worry, there's an easy jump you can do to compensate. From there, we can head to the tower, which houses another one of my favorite new challenges in the mod. Activating this scarecrow at the base will start a Capulus Rising Lava challenge that is incredibly tight. I know it's not something crazy or anything too unique, but this moon I had a lot of fun with. Now, Spirit here is probably the first brutal fight in the mod that has some wacky gimmicks to it. First off, it's Capulus. When we spawn into the fight, we have to throw Cappy on a scarecrow to free us from a cage and keep Cappy there for the entirety of the fight. From then on, we have to hit Spewart while he moves quickly up and down on a moving platform. Honestly, because of Spewart's weird hitboxes, this fight can be pretty annoying. But once you get into the rhythm, it isn't that bad. Still pretty annoying though. From here, once you've made it to your next story objective, it's pretty clear this mod is not playing nice. Truthfully, I believe there is absolutely no counterplay to this. Just pray for mercy and shoot. Once that's done, we're brought to what is one of my favorite remixed boss fights in the mod, Torque Drift. 
You get this shrunken area surrounded entirely by poison, but what makes this interesting is the fact that the boss's weak points appear above the poison, with blocks placed under them to assist you. Because of this, you have to follow a weird playstyle of getting the hit, bailing back to land, and repeat. I don't know why, but I just love this. It's not at all what I was expecting, but it just works so well without feeling stupid. It's also really cool how in the last phase of the fight, you have to uncapture the uproot to break a platform to stand on, because all of the blocks that form are in a straight vertical line. Now even though we're done with the story, there's still one quick part of Wooded Kingdom left to cover, Deep Woods. This area is a nightmare. You have mummies everywhere that like to constantly spawn and chase you around, with every challenge down here being pushed to their absolute limit, being made more complicated, difficult, and confusing. Fortunately, if you want to escape, all the seed robots and planters are in the same location as the base game, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. So I'd just like to preface this next kingdom by saying it sucks. When people try Superstar Mode for the first time, this is a big roadblock, and yeah, you can probably guess why. This fight plays like you're doing the jump rope challenge while fighting off Bowser. Oh, and there's dry bones here too. Fortunately, after a suffering fight, you never have to do that again. Lost Kingdom is another one of those kingdoms that has a pretty interesting gimmick going on. Instead of having a surrounding pool of poison, the whole area has been changed to feature poisonous waves. This means when you're in the lower parts of the kingdom, you face a constant risk of death. Isn't that fun? Klepto Steel and Cappy is here too, but truthfully this conflict really isn't affected by the changes in the kingdom. The real challenge comes into play when you're out and about trying to find 10 moons that don't seem absolutely horrible to get. But hey, once that's done, we get to go to Metro. Unfortunately, it is time to face our first unfinished kingdom. As mentioned earlier, Superstar Mode is a work-in-progress mod for Super Mario Odyssey. This means the overworld in some kingdoms, like Metro, remains untouched. On the bright side, all the sub-areas in the mod should be altered, so if you're still interested in a new and exciting challenge, we can just head into a sub-world and give it a shot. Unfortunately, there really isn't much else to say here besides that. Don't worry, we can make up for that lack of change with Snow Kingdom, I think? It looks pretty normal, but yeah. All the freezing water that originally existed in the kingdom is replaced with lava. Getting into Shiveria is changed too. The hole is blocked off and we're forced to take a pipe instead. Once inside, things are mostly normal, but once we head into the four main areas, that's where things start to take a turn. The poison room is now riddled with more typhoos, except for the fact that you don't get a typhoon to kill the spinies at the end. Yeah, thanks for the advice, Cappy. The Rango boss room has rising lava, and this truthfully makes it impossibly hard. Unless there's something I missed, you need to literally speedrun the room to finish in time. Like, I used some pretty good speedrun strats in the boss fight, and I was still just barely able to grab Rango's moon in time. The moon shards room, on the other hand, is pretty straightforward. It's got some raised cold water eels, and it's just overall a little bit harder to traverse. The ice room is the same. They've added more enemies and bombs to the mix to make the room overall more difficult. Or, you know, you could just do this. Due to this kingdom being one of the altered ones, I was kind of expecting something creative for Boundable, and it even appears that way, peeking into the raceway. But upon starting the race, all of those new assets from before are just gone. I guess they can't realistically add more obstacles to the race without breaking it? I'm not quite sure, but I'm definitely a little disappointed. Heading into the post piece section of the kingdom, we can get a much better view of the lava. Really, that's all I wanted to show, so we can leave now. Seaside is in a weird state. I wouldn't consider this a changed or finished kingdom, because as far as I can tell, the vast majority of the kingdom isn't any different. Like, the sub areas are still changed, like in Metro, sure, but there's also these little pocket areas visible in the overworld that have a different appearance. But kind of like sub areas, these challenges exist essentially on their own, either because it's a 2D section, or they just kind of exist in a closed off space, so it makes sense. Of these, the volleyball change is probably my favorite. You'd probably expect the ball to go really fast here. In actuality, it goes slower, because there's three. You have to juggle all three balls to win. What the actual heck? I hate this. But that's probably the point. Luncheon is another no-change kingdom. You guys probably already get the gist of what that means, so we're just gonna skip it. Fortunately, Ruined, on the other hand, is a newish challenge to the boss fight. Like the Refine of Mushroom, this fight has ice physics, except they're on the dragon too. 
This can make grabbing the swords a bit more difficult, but overall I wouldn't call it much more of a challenge. On top of this, a mummy will occasionally spawn, and I've always found it a bit weird that there'll be at like most one or two of these guys. I figured with this mod being superstar mode, we'd get like at least five, but I guess not. Bowser's Kingdom really only has one noticeable change, that being the mech fight. And let me tell you, it is insane. Every single piece of the mech will do damage to you, excluding the bubbles that contain the brutals. On top of this, you're trapped inside this incredibly tight and confined area that likes to glitch out the mech's legs when it walks, making it even harder to climb. Realistically, I don't think there is any optimal way to approach this. It's just that difficult and seemingly unpredictable. In all honesty, I do think this is a cool and interesting challenge, but it's incredibly obnoxious. I don't think the Pokio quite has the level of precision you need to not run into dumb stuff while doing this fight. That being said, I could just be bad. And finally, we've reached Moon Kingdom. The first thing you'll probably notice is that the low gravity is just flat out gone, and it's probably one of the most disorienting things ever. Moon Kingdom was originally made with this trait in mind, so having it stripped away from us is just weird. We're also greeted with a new skybox, faster moon snakes, and some other small changes in the overworld. Going into Moon Cave, the gravity doesn't change, but at least now it feels normal. The general appearance of this area has stayed the same for the most part, but the challenges throughout are altered. Like here in the middle, the moving platform moves a bit too fast to realistically use, so you're essentially forced to do the section without them. In the next section, the initial large bullet bill was also replaced with a small one, making the section a little bit harder. Reaching the charge and chuck section, the rocks move even faster now, but this really isn't much of an issue because we break the rocks with the charge and chuck anyways. Now Moon Cave really starts to get interesting with the Madame Brutal boss fight because we have to fight two of them at the same time with extra obstacles like lights and tomatoes added into the mix. You'd think all of this would make the fight pretty difficult, and it is, but not quite as bad as you'd expect. What happens is once you defeat the first Brutal, you've won the fight. The catch is you just have to die and come back. The two Brutals won't be there anymore and you can continue on your way. Alright, we're almost there. Bowser's up next. This Bowser fight compared to the one in Cloud is pretty safe. There aren't any sorts of crazy or absurd add-ons to the fight itself, just a really cool arena that gives the final fight an interesting challenge. And let me just say I like this a lot. Some of my favorite things in the mod aren't necessarily the hardest challenges, but the ones that feel new and well thought out, like this one, even if it is a bit straightforward. After the Bowser fight, we're greeted with the true final boss in a way, the escape sequence. This is pain. The majority of the escape is an insanely tight sequence you have to play through without using Bowser. It really gives you a decent perspective of how big this area is too. Sections you could pass in moments with Bowser take so much more effort with Mario, and honestly, I think that's kind of cool. Once we get through that, we're still not quite done though. We have this really annoying 2D section with Hammer Bros, and gosh, I hate Hammer Bros. But once we finally pass through that, we get to use Bowser and we're free. The nice thing about this is the fact that once we reach Bowser, we no longer have to worry about redoing that previous section, as a death will bring us right back to him. I was honestly surprised this was a feature considering the nature of this mod, but I am thankful for it. Once we've cleared the harder final room, we can hop on the wire and beat Superstar Mode. Or have we beaten it? Congratulations, you've made it to postgame. And this mod does in fact have one, cool. Now we have access to neat things like Mushroom Kingdom, which while the overworld seems mostly tame, it does open up several boss refights like a giant dragon, two cuckoo at the same time, whatever the heck this is, and more. But Mushroom Kingdom isn't the only interesting thing we get out of post-game. Post-game opens up our access to moon rocks, which spawn more moons in the kingdoms we break them. This means in those changed kingdoms we explored earlier, we get some even harder challenges. On top of this, moon rocks also open up new sub-areas that contain some of the most difficult areas in the game. Once these areas get the superstar treatment, they really become something else. There is one thing that I believe stands out the most for casual players in Super Mario Odyssey's postgame, and that would be Dark and Darker Side. Unfortunately, Darker Side is not currently finished in the mod, and from what I've heard, it's going to be the last thing worked on. I couldn't find an exact quote on that, but to me, that makes the most sense anyways. Darker Side feels like it'd be the most hyped up thing in the whole mod, and you might as well save the best for last. Dark Side, on the other hand, is actually complete and likely contains some of the hardest challenges currently available in the mod. The boss gauntlet has been chained from facing a boss rush of the Brutals one at a time to them all ganging up on you in this absolutely chaotic mess. 
Oh, and gravity is normal, so you can't just stall in the air and try and avoid attacks. This fight is just a complete mess, and it feels like it functions in a sort of domino effect. If you can kill one or two, you can probably finish the fight. From there, you're able to immediately travel to the Mecha Brutal fight, and fortunately, if we die here, we get a checkpoint in the form of a wire, which is another surprising but pleasant feature. This fight follows the same gimmick we saw in Bowser's Kingdom, where touching the mech hurts you. The difference here is that we have captures to aid us in the fight, so knocking the mech down with a hammer bro and getting a hit is honestly a lot easier than what we had to do with the Pokio in Bowser's. Upon beating the mech, we're opened up to the rest of what Darkseid has to offer, which ends up being some of the hardest sub-areas in the game. This is probably my personal favorite part of Darkseid, both in the mod and in the base game. These already hard levels were just taken to a completely new extreme with the mod, either from just taking a small change to make it harder, or by creating something more unique and new that's just absurd. If you've been able to make it this far in the mod, you're definitely in for a treat, or maybe pain would be a better way to describe it. Overall, I think I would say I'm a huge fan of this mod and that it's reached its popularity within the SMO community for good reason. It takes that simple idea you see in a lot of mods and ROM hacks of Mario but harder and executes it pretty effectively. There are still some challenges that I feel could overall be a bit better or feel more fair while still being difficult. With how many moons there are in this game and the fact that this mod is still a work in progress, I think it's excusable. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I put a lot of work into it and had to rush a lot of stuff last minute, but hopefully it was worth it. Also, before anyone asks, no, I am not doing an install tutorial for the manga. That's the kind of stuff I'm not good at explaining, nor is it the content direction I'd like to take. If you guys enjoyed this, please consider subscribing because most of my viewers aren't. It's free and it really helps out a lot. I'll see you guys next time and hopefully the next video does not take as long.